RPN 10 or a PA 144-116BG. Uh, the 11 is uh, 11 elements. It's a about a 16 dBi. That's a dBi's isotropic measurement. But um, the antenna is about uh, I think it's about five meters long. I've, I've got the spec here, but it's a it, it's a properly sized antenna, which is the main thing. Um, antennas amplifiers have um, been uh, making antennas according to their site anyway for 30 years and they make antennas, preamps, bandpass filters and uh, they seem to be quite good. They're manufactured in, a, in Serbia and um, I found that quite a, a lot of the stuff that comes from uh, you know, that part of the world seems to be quite well made and solid. Um, I priced up making one of these because I do have all the dimensions. By the time I got all the materials bought, paid for and delivered, it came to slightly over what I could buy a ready-made antenna. So henceforth I went out and bought this one and uh, the delivery charge is very, very reasonable and they do deliver uh, worldwide. Uh, I haven't seen a review on, the, on this antenna. Uh, I've seen a review on a smaller one but not the, uh, this one. It's a uh, quite a large beam and it all comes in bits so when I arrive at whatever site I'm going to operate portable I need to have about an hour plus to assemble the antenna and the mast and hoist it up and uh, get op operational. So let's have a look see what's in the box. The antenna arrived this morning so all I've done is opened it, uh, had a, a, a brief look inside, and it seems reasonably well packed. Obviously all the uh, bubble wrap will never be used again, but it's interesting to see that it, it uh, supports it quite well so that the uh, during delivery uh, nothing should get damaged. The first uh, item I took out the box was the uh, radiator, it has an end connector. The antenna is aluminium but it looks God, that, the copper, yeah that's right, This the radiating element is copper. I don't know if you can see that, or the colour of the material, and it's been painted grey. Presumably so it looks the same as all the um, other elements. Um, the elements come in two packs and uh, they've supported each other well because I can't see any obvious damage. Uh, the centre section uh, comes with this rather large steel bracket with a post on it. This is for antenna support. It looks like it has paracord which would string out from the centre point to some point along um, the four and a half booms. Uh, to prevent sag and give it some rigidity. Um, we have more um, hardware, mounted hardware to the mast presumably. That's about steel, that looks about 8 gauge. Uh, small bag of hardware and then the clamps which will ultimately uh, clamp the uh, Now, the antenna comes in four sections, and the two end sections are 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And in uh, real money, that's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter square. And I measured the uh, gauge, it's a two millimeter gauge. Uh, when I priced up to make my own one, I used to. Uh, uh, 10 gauge which is uh, uh, 3.2 millimeters so this is lighter I'm just wondering how strong it will be but we'll find out once the antennas mounted and uh, we'll, we'll kind of imagine what it would be like in, in pretty bad weather and here is another 30 millimeter portion and then in the center we have two 40 millimeter square sections so that's a total of four sections and uh, 
we'll place those end to end and build it on the ground and we'll see exactly how easy it is to mount on the mast. I've got some tools. I think that's all I'll need. I'm outside the garage, so if I need a different size, then it, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Right then, let's um, let's get get on with the build. So, just before the assembly, I've placed all the parts where they would go so for the segments of the boom. Um, to tell which way round these go is fairly self-explanatory because element one, which would be the reflector, is at this end and they count along here element 11. Now the elements go underneath the boom and uh, there's no instructions that can come with this antenna but there's some paracord and it's on top so that must be the top. So the elements are placed below the boom and you have some self-tapping screw holes in the relevant positions. The other th guide that you get so the first section has a number one here, connects to number one there, number two to number three, number four to number four. This hardware that you get is the mast attachment hardware, a center post, which is really useful because the cord would attach to this eye end up here. This is really substantial. That is a steel square section, stainless by the looks of it, post. Well, all fasteners appear to be made of stainless, so that's really quite good. Here are two uh, center portion attachment plates, and here are the bolts and a handful of fasteners. So, so we have enough. So there is the boom laid out, and that's not too impossible for a one-man portable operation. Now the elements are also numbered. Element number one, you notice this has a 1A and a 1B on it, so we keep all the A's down one side and pay attention to which way round it goes because the A here, the ballon goes forwards to there. So that would mean the A's are all on this right hand side here and the B's are all on the left. And then they call this one three, which is the first director. And it's got numbers on them as well, uh, 3A, 3B, so A's on that side. 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A, 9, 10 to 11. So, let's get built. So here is the antenna built, well the boom. And I'm really impressed with the, there's no droop, it's very substantial. Um, there's no droop and there's no bend either, no banana in of the uh, square section boom. It's a very substantial structure. The, um, the paracord is doubled and it's very well put together as well. If you heat shrink the ends and we've got a couple of clevises for getting the right tension and uh, it all looks pretty good as you can see the fourth part of the antenna just match these up and these numbers you keep upright you keep the attachment holes for the elements in the right place as well 
the centerpiece here, or the joining here, of the two 40mm square is quite substantial and there's absolutely no buckling or anything. Well, it looks very substantial. The centre section, you can mount this right at the top of your mast because you've got this. And uh, I think that's an excellent design. It's quite substantial. We've got these bent into a square shape. There are notches here on the boom which is indicative of where this goes. And on the other side I have noted that this 5 and 5 together, 6 and 6 together gives you the mounting point for the uh, for the uh, antenna uh, centre, you know, mast attachment. So all in all Quite impressed with that so far. So next bit, get the elements on and see what she looks like. So here's the antenna completed. Uh, you can see a little bow on there. Um, now these are held on by self-tapping screws. and it's only two millimeters thick. Now whilst that sample, you need to be careful how much torque you apply to them. You strip one, I mean, get out of jail would be to drill all the way through and use a longer screw so you've got more material up here. And then the last option could be, say a three millimeter or an eighth screw with a nut. Um, you know this, or you could use pipe clamps that uh, another famous make makes. The ends of these are open and uh, here we have it. So that's quite, it's quite a long looking antenna. I think I can cope with this on my own when I go contesting. Uh, I just, I can't do a performance check. It's only a metre off the ground, it's right up against the wall. But I did do an SWR check. And I've got my, I have one of those mini 600s here. Now, I don't know if I can beam in, but let's go scan. Now, I've selected one. 44 megahertz to 142. The green line is right along the one here. Um, so from 144, it's virtually flat. Um, just see that little green line there. And there's the one here. So the SWR is scanning across the whole of the antenna. Um, if I come out of there, go measurement, you see through the Smith chart that it's right on the 50 ohm button, so that's really quite nice. If um, we exit that and just uh, exit that and just do a check for SWR, I mean it's right on the end. SWR 1.08 at 144 and that reduces slightly as it goes up but that's perfectly fine um what can i say i reckon it'll take me about an hour to set this up i'm going to try and do some rapid i'll leave some bits together i won't have to learn how it goes together but i'll leave this chunk here i can take that off for portable it's just two bolts but um leave that on this section here. Um, I can leave that loose, take two bolts out, remove that. I'll have to take all eight bolts out down here. Um, so I reckon it's with the mast, the rotator, I'm going to have to give myself an hour and a half uh, when I go out contesting, which 
isn't great if you're just doing a couple of hours worth of uh, two meter car testing. Um, anyway, it's it's a big antenna. They say that you can stack antennas, so put two small ones, or you can lengthen them. Lengthening antennas can have an effect on gain. Uh, I'd like to get another one of these and put two together, but before I do that, I think I'll, I'll test this. This isn't too substantial. I think you can put up with a bit of weather. VHF contests always seem to be on the worst weather days of the year. Um, so there we have it. Um, just a bit of data. I took some data from the website. Uh, Antennas-amplifiers.com um, You might find that you have national dealers in your own uh, home country. Free space, forward gain, 14.8 dBi, that's isotropic, remember, not DVD or anything. So, uh, you know, the caveat with isotropic is that it, it's a theoretical figure. Uh, front to back ratio is 27 dB. Now, 3 dB horizontal beam, beam width is 35 degrees. Now, I, I looked at that uh, with 3 dB vertical bandwidth. Uh, beam width, sorry, in a vertical sense is 38 degrees. So stacking is 3.1. So 3.1 meters, I could put two in a stack. Uh, I don't think I'll go horizontally out, but uh, I hmm, depends. Sometimes horizontal is easier. See, I've got so much isolated mast without support. Uh, 3.1, 3 then you've got the other beam, then you go down a bit more and you get your rotator. That's a lot of bendable mast. But anyway, might go even horizontal. Uh, nominal input impedance is 50 ohms, we all know that. SWR across the entire band is 1.2 or less than, we've checked that, that's right. Maximum power input. Now, there's about 500 watts it says here. And I think that is a very fair input. But it does say here, on that line, 1500 watts available. So what that might mean is 500 watts in FM, that's a full duty cycle, but IACS, intermittent, you know, uh, service, could be about 1500 watts. So yeah, I think so, it's just a sta substantial antenna. Uh, matching method, as you can see, is direct feed through. Connectors are N, number of elements is 11. The element diameters are all aluminium tubes, uh, 8 millimeter diameter, 8 millimeter diameter for the uh, radiator, and it's copper. Just see the little brassy, coppery color in there. Um, and anything else we can glean? Uh, the longest element is just over a meter. So it must be this one on the end here. And that's another thing I noticed, the elements are a good size. Uh, my other beams are significantly shorter elements. and uh, So that, that will kind of tell me it's uh, probably a bit uh, better performance. Uh, element mounted positions are all below the boom. Uh, Ballon and connector is included, we see that. Boom length is 5.72 metres. So, it's a, quite a big one. Uh, boom size 40 by 40, that's a centre two, and the two outboard ones are 30 each. Number of boom pieces is four, and that's the whole reason I bought this one, because I can move it in the back of the car. Uh, guy rope support, yep, yeah, well, it's got the top bit. I don't think it means that it, it needs guy rope support, probably. Uh, mountain mast diameter is 43 to 70. Well, I'm using 50, and I don't suggest using that little thing there. That's just a, a little test rig I've put together. That's about an inch and a quarter, an inch and a half. Uh, transportation length is 1.49 meters, which is great. Survival wind speed, 180 kilometers an hour. Hopefully, I won't be getting portable in those sort of conditions. Antenna weight 7.6 kilograms. 
or its gross weight is 9.7. Um, so two antennas, so it's 3.1 meters for gain. Now, that is if you stack them. Not much of a review without going out in the field, but I mean, I live in a place where there's, in Scotland, where there's no two meter activity at all. I'm going to find a hill and beam into someone else's backyard. That's why I need some gain. Rotator, two inch pole. I use that and drive over the foot. Uh, this cranks down, so it leans over. I still use guy ropes because I don't like the uh, the mast to flop about over the overhead. And um, you know, something I can handle on my own. So that's it. The PA 144-11-6 BG. The G means the guys. So make sure you get the BG. I don't know what the B is. I don't know what the 6 is either. Well, I know what the 11 is. 11 of these things. And the 144 is the, uh, the frequency. So there you go. There's the website. Okay, thanks very much. Speak to you all soon.